Um, my name is Jung In, and I'm an interactive audiovisual artist. And I'm also doing my PhD in music technology at Huddersfield University at the moment. Um, whenever I, I introduce myself as an interactive artist uh, who's working with contemporary dances, and I program my sound to be triggered and manipulated um, through technology. Not always, but some people stereotype my, my work to be like um, using very sleek motion tracking technology with big projection, but my work is not like that. And I think it's because maybe I use the term interactive and the word itself could be very controversial um, because the term interactive has been used to actually um, to show that kind of um, high functioning technology based artwork these days a lot. And maybe it could be because I'm a South Korean, um, which is a country with the fastest internet, which has Samsung, LG, Asian, I don't know, when people look at me, I could be very like tech person. Um, when I uh, met my colleague Olivier, um, he's also another PhD student and he's um, French. And he told me he doesn't like interactive art. I was like, why? And he's like, well, I had to go to South Korea like a couple of years ago and, and he had an opportunity uh, to work with some students from the top science university in South Korea. And basically his job was uh, programming his music for their robots and their robots were exhibited at Samsung Gallery. And it was very obvious that he got lots of funding to do this, but it almost traumatized him <laughs> because, well, he worked with scientists and scientists work in a very different way. And they pushed him so much to produce everyday different thing like, hey, let's, let's produce something, let's work, let's work, well, let's work. And well, as Abin said, like, yeah, we are Koreans, we work really hard, we always produce things. And, but not all the Koreans are a bit like that and our generation is a bit, bit uh, relaxed than the older generations. But I think it's because we have um, this uh, cultural background, uh, histor historical background, um, especially after Second World War. Um, during Second World War, we were occupied by, by Japan, and then right after that, we had the Korean War. So in the 50s, um, South Korea was completely devastated, like there was nothing. And in the 60s, uh, although we were a democratic country, we had a dictatorship, and we had a slogan like, uh, let's make our country better. So basically, my, it was so normal for my grandparents, my parents, they work really hard. They always produce something, sell something to other countries. We bring the money in and send their kids to better schools, better university, and they they just sacrifice, and it was just so normal for them. And and that's how I could be here now as well. And so, like, we still have this mind that like let's produce, produce, and uh, work hard. And and then I was like. I really didn't feel like I wasn't really, you know, fitting, fitting in that kind of a cultural scene. Especially when I was in high school, like I always felt I was such a failure because I couldn't really follow that really strict rules. Like, so I always wanted to get away from that. And I moved away from it like about 10 years ago. I moved to London and then I lived in different cities. I worked in different cities and now I'm back in, um, Manchester, and well, if I never moved away from this uh, South Korea, I probably never thought about what actually technology does to me and what actually technology does to my art. Um, I really wanted to think it properly, not, not just using a piece of technology to um, program my sound and just let my dancers to trigger sound and just look pretty. And so now uh, when I go back to South Korea, sometimes some things are really alien to me, um, especially if you've ever been to South Korea, when you get into a lift, 
um, you will not hear uh, music, but you will hear, you will watch a TV. Like there will be, there's an advertisement. It gives you information which you didn't ask. If you wait for a, a metro um, in underground, you are standing at the platform, you will watch TV again, and there are more advertisement. And I sometimes, like now I think, like I look around and I look Koreans, and then I guess it might, be, it might not be just Koreans, but in Korea, like people seem to just taking it so normal, like we don't really analyze it and think about it, why we have to get all this information. And well, when we uh, adopt new technology, it's very fast. Like when, if it makes our life easier and if it's very convenient, we just take it, we, we just snap it. And that's why Korea changes it so fast. But and then, um, my inspiration to create sound is a physical movement. And, but the, this new technology seems like freed us from so many different kinds of tasks, but it actually put us in a very minimal physical movement. Like, for instance, smartphones, of course, like you're just tapping and swip, swiping your fingers, but that's it. And because I work with dancers, you know, this we can do so many things with smartphone and then like this physical movement is so like just that. So I actually wanted to focus on that kind of idea rather than um, just digging new technology. And I started using game controller called GameTrack. Uh, it's game controller only sold for about six years in the UK and before Kinect or Wii Nintendo came out. Um, it's really simple game controller. Um, it looks like this. So basically it has uh, two red wires which users can pull in and out. And it tracks the length of wires and the direction of the wires. And I, I started using, me, using this because it, look, it looked very interesting. Um, when my dancers used it, um, I really liked that symmetric lines they created with these red wires. Uh, for instance, this one. Uh, this piece is called is, um, Oblique Theorem. Um, I actually performed this for the first time at NEON in 2011. And um, it was really interesting because this piece of technology has so limited function. Just um, the, the choreographers, what chore choreographers could do was just pulling the wires, moving around and spinning with it. And so it's this very simple technology actually calls certain movements. And then what I really wanted to, um, what I really want, what I was searching for was a piece of technology not just challenge me to program uh, my audio or, and, or video, but also challenge uh, choreographers to create choreography rather than they just feel very, they're free to move. Um, and also, when I worked on Overlick Theorem, I asked um, one of the dancers to connect all the wires onto their bodies and then, and then see what happens. And then she, she connected all these X wires onto her body, and then she tried to move it, and then she realized that it was really difficult. And she says she was almost moving like um, having a physical stuttering, like she was like doing that. And then she says, no, it's too difficult. I'm not going to use it. So we scrapped that idea. And then this time I, actually, I wanted to actually go back to that idea because whichever technology we use, whether it's doing really high, you know, many tasks or simple tasks, um, it always have manuals. Like we cannot be always completely free. Like we have to follow the manuals. So if anything goes wrong, we suddenly realize, oh, well, where is my manual? Let's have a look. And you're like, oh, it actually has to go to this way and then this and then and then, then. So I was like, oh, why not? Why, why, why? I, I think I really, uh, should focus on that how much technology can limit us and use it um, physically to present it. I really uh, like producing 
super uh, processed sound, but and then I I wanted to contradict that uh, through visually. So my dancers are actually really, you can see that my dancers are really struggling to move uh, with all these entangled wires um, or, you know, in my new piece. Uh, this one. It's called locus. And locus means room in Latin and this is came from the idea like the technology limits us and whenever I use technology for my performance um, I always feel like I'm putting my performers in a, in a small box because they always have to move in certain frame uh, I, I created with my sound my video so it seems like they are doing um, very interesting interactive work, but actually there are certain rules and they have to follow and you know, that kind of things. And um, in Locus, this one dancer will be eventually uh, in, entangled with the whole eight red wires and then she struggles um, to complete her movement. And then also the, the computer system goes uh, uncontrollable so my video and sound become uncontrollable and it just plays random sound and random video and then it finishes. Um, I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I'm going to play the climax and then I will finish my talk.
Thank you.